For many of us, the first thing that comes to mind when we say the word relationship is romantic relationships, right? We love love in, in our modern age. And, and uh, I mean, how else would you explain the popularity of, of shows like The Bachelor, right? Which are all about trying to develop that romantic relationship, right? Or in my house, the popularity of the Hallmark Channel and the various TV shows and movies that come along with that. Uh, that all seem to be very similar to me, but uh, very popular nonetheless. Because we love romantic relationships, so uh, it, it behooves us to then understand a little better what is it that makes these rom romantic relationships what they are, what are some of the different characteristics, how are they similar, how are they different, where do they come from, all those types of things. So in these, uh, this video, starting with this video, and in the next we'll discover uh, what we mean by romantic relationships and what's involved in those types of relationships. So let's start with looking at some of the different characteristics and variances that we see in romantic relationships. The first of which is exclusivity. Some relationships will vary or all relationships will vary in the manner of exclusivity. Sometimes you're in an exclusive relationship. Sometimes you're not. Um, and, and so sometimes that can, um, it can vary in terms of what that means. Oh, first of all, exclusivity would mean that you are seeing one other person. It's you and one other person involved in that relationship. And that's it. Other times, though, you're going to see you and one other person and one other person, right? Usually in this, and this is not what we would call a love triangle, right? This is not a triangle because it's really just one person seeing two different people. You know, person B and person C are not involved apart from their mutual relationship with, with person A. Now, a love triangle would look like this, right? When you got all three people are what's now called a thruple, right? Three people involved in a relationship. But uh, sometimes relationships will vary either intentionally or unintentionally on, on the part of both people because they've made a choice to be exclusive or not be exclusive or sometimes because they've chosen to involve you know one or one or more people in addition to the initial two people um, so relationships will vary in terms of exclusivity it's not always the same and not always viewed the same um, in terms of romantic relationships Another area that may vary or where we see some variance in romantic relationships is voluntariness uh, sometimes you know in our modern age we tend to think of in in the Western cultures, you know, marriage and relationships are a voluntary thing, right? We choose who we're going to be with because we fall in love with that person and things. But to be truthful, that's really a fairly new idea. Um, the idea that you would choose to marry someone or be with somebody just because you fall in love with them, um, however you define that even, um, would be uh, something that you know, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, here in the United States would have been less common um, and, and still is not as common in other cultures. It just depends on where you're at. And uh, so, I mean, you know, it, it may vary in terms of you marry someone because of their their economic prospects um, in terms of, you know, the, the ability to, to provide stability for yourself and and uh, and for those around you. Or it could be because you're merging two different um, uh, families together for the, the, the strength that that can provide. There could be a lot of different reasons for um, you know, what we would call involuntary relationship. Now that does not mean it's wrong though. That's not, we're not talking here about somebody kidnapping somebody else. We're talking about things like arranged marriages and, and things that may not be quite as, you know, these two people are choosing to be together as much as there are other factors involved in. And in many cultures, that's, that's very commonplace. It may seem odd to us in most Westernized cultures, but um, that doesn't make it wrong. It just makes it different, right? So relationships will vary in terms of their voluntariness. Relationships also vary in the nature of love. The romantic relationships will vary in the nature of love. So, you know, how we define love has changed over time and how we describe love. And even the fact that we only have really that one word anymore to describe love, where in other cultures they have different words to describe different kinds of love. There would be a love that describes how you love your spouse and a different kind of love, a different word to describe the love you have for your parents or your children or for God or for whatever else. Um, so even love, the word is different in our culture. And, and so that we see variances in terms of love. And we also see within our culture, different, different types of love that exist in relationships. Um, so for example, you have um, Sternberg's triangular theory of love here is one popular theory of, of identifying or looking at love and, and identifying the differences in the, the inherent nature of love. So you see that in Sternberg's triangular theory of love, you've got the three base areas, intimacy, commitment, and passion. And then in between there, you have all these different things. So if you have just intimacy, that just means you like the person, right? So intimacy alone just means that you like the person and that's it. 
Uh, commitment means you're committed to that person, and passion means you have this infatuation with the person, right? Uh, but then when you combine those things, you get different outcomes as well. Combining intimacy and passion, you get romantic love. Combining companionate, I'm sorry, com commitment and intimacy, you get companionate love and so forth. And then in the middle there, when you have all three of these uh, areas, intimacy, passion, and commitment, then you see uh, consummate love. Right. So there are different types of love, though, that it can exist in different relationships. Um, so even within our this is just within our westernized uh, ideal of love um, that we see these things. Right. So we have the triangular um, theory of love, which is one uh, way of viewing love in our society and, and how relationships may vary in the types of love that they, that exist there. In our love, in our uh, culture as well, we, we talk uh, broadly, more broadly about love ex existing on a spectrum of, of what we call passionate love. Um, <clears throat> so this is just that infatuation and liking then and companionate love. Right. And then when you have the, the, the intersection of those things, though, you get consummate love. But um, but relationships, in our view, here in westernized cultures tend to exist on that spectrum between Highly passionate, which is great. You have that high high level of emotion and infat infatuation, but it can burn out. We know that you know passionate relationships will ebb and flow, and so if your relationship exists solely on that passionate love, then in those times when it, when it ebbs and it's not there strongly, there could there could come a time when that relationship would end during one of those periods, as opposed to companionate love, which is really based on commitment and a, a, a will and a, a desire and a, and a commitment to being together regardless of any other circumstance. And you may not have that emotion, that fire that fuels that relationship, but you're going to stick together anyway. And again, that's not necessarily entirely healthy. You want some of that passion. So consummate love then finds its way in the middle there. Well, ideally, every relationship would exist somewhere in the middle of those two things where you have some combination of both passionate and companionate love then. But Anyway, our relationships will vary in the type and the the the, uh, the strength of the different types of love that you may experience in that relationship. They also vary in terms of sexuality. Uh, in our modern society, obviously, we recognize that we have heterosexual relationships and homosexual relationships, and and everything you know, kind of in between there, right? Some that are that, that involve some nature of both, as well as asexual relationships, which involve really a lack of, of sexual interest and, and connection. You have those kinds of romantic relationships as well. So they're going to vary in terms of sexuality and the way we approach sexuality. And then within that, how much of a factor is sexuality in that relationship? Is it a really um, strong and important part of that relationship? Or is it you know, and not an unimportant part of the relationship, but less uh, is the relationship built on other things apart from that more so? But so relationships are going to vary in, in, in across all spectrums of sexuality and how we look at sexuality within that relationship. They also vary in terms of permanence. You know, some relationships, we, we, first of all, we think every relationship is going to last forever. That's the reason we enter it. We wouldn't enter a relationship probably with the idea that it's going to be temporary, but, but they are sometimes, right? So you have some relationships that, that exist forever. Right. You have these wonderful, lovely old couples that are elderly couples that are together for a long time. My parents have been married for more than 60 years, which is amazing. And uh, and so you have this sense of permanence there, um, this idea of permanence. But other relationships uh, aren't going to last and, and go the distance. So relationships are going to vary. In fact, most of us will have several relationships in our lifetimes that aren't permanent before we perhaps get to the one that is permanent. So. We're going to likely experience um, all of these types of things in terms of permanence as well. So we can see that relationships exist on all different uh, levels and different have different uh, aspects to them. So we're going to have these romantic relationships and they're all going to be different. Every relationship that we have is going to be different, let alone the relationships that other people are, are having. So we want to get out of the mindset of thinking of romantic relationships just as we see that in the Hallmark uh, channel. And those are wonderful movies and they, they have a great message. But uh, love isn't always like the uh, romantic relationships don't always end up like that. And so we need to be prepared to um, appreciate and engage in, in romantic relationships in all of the different ways and across all those different factors and characteristics. If you have questions about the nature of romantic relationships or anything else related to interpersonal communication, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope that you will have a better understanding of your romantic relationships or potential romantic relationships and the different factors and characteristics and variances that exist within them.